the book of Luke chronicles out the birth of Jesus as from the perspective of Luke, because it is one of the more in-depth, um, I guess you could say you kind of read the book of Luke and you can see how he went and uh, kind of got different perspectives. Um, he talked to people that, that saw it, and he kind of talked to people who witnessed the birth of Jesus. So this is a monologue that I performed recently called The Innkeeper, and it's from the perspective of the innkeeper talking to Luke, getting his kind of testimony um, of what happened and the events leading up to Jesus' birth. So this is called The Innkeeper, and I hope you enjoy it. This whole thing has been a huge misunderstanding. They thought I said, no room, when what I actually said was, no room, to sweep the floors, to make it clean enough for such a guest. And I never said anything about sleeping in a stable. I said, you'd look nice and sable, the color. You see nothing about a stable at all. <laughs> ah, who am I kidding? I told them to sleep in the barn. I, I had no choice. Everyone was in town for the census and, and the holidays, you know, travel season. Uh, and my wife would have been furious if I had given them our room. So you see, I had no choice. I'd already had a slew of wise men practically knocking down my door, asking to secure a room for the big show, as they called it. They tried to offer me all sorts of bizarre gifts. Uh, and one of them even offered me Frankenstein. I said, no can do. I even put up a no vacancy sign. I'm pretty sure that was knocked over by a camel. I even spread a rumor that, that the inn was haunted by the Holy Ghost. But that was, uh, kept them coming. It was very strange. <sighs> that we, when we heard that Caesar had said that there would be a census, we naturally knew that the place would get busy. So we talked to an architect about an inn expansion. But when we found out that it would cost up to three sheep, and the Bethlehem Historic Society would have to approve the plans, it was out of the question. <sighs> we knew it would get busy. A and naturally, that night, Mary and Joseph knocked on my door. <sighs> when I opened the door, I told them, <sighs> well, I told them to buzz off. But when I saw that Mary was with child, I knew I had to do something. So I did the first thing anybody would do. I went and I knocked on all the guest doors and I saw to see if they were still awake or alive. Really, you never know. In the age of plagues, you never know. Does locusts mean anything to you? Anyways, I was seeing if they were still alive. The next option was to go see the wife. And of course, one look from her and that told me that was not going to happen. And since I forgot her birthday last month, that's a boast. That's a boat we best not rock, if you know what I mean. Anyways, the next obvious option was to check with other nearby inns to see if they had any room. So I tied notes to the legs of seven ravens and sent them off. I told them exactly where to go, how to get there, and never heard back from one of them. <sighs> Silly birds. They probably didn't have their GPS turned on. You know, Galilee and Palestine steering. We couldn't get anywhere in those days without it. We were really in a pickle. When I went and told Mary that we were out of options, she didn't look too happy about it at all. She looked at me and said, you can keep your in. And I said, that's exactly what I do, ma'am. She didn't like that at all either. She got this very mean face and she told me I was a being a smart you know what, which is what made me think of my donkey. I, I told them that I had another place that they could stay there. Uh, I kept my donkey and some other animals there, but they were more than welcome to use it for free. She didn't like this option at all. She looked at me and she got this mean, contorted look upon her face and she said, he, he, oh, and I said, he, he, who, what? I am just standing here trying to help you. I have done nothing wrong. Joseph called me down. He said, it's okay. Just take us to the barn as quickly as you can. So I did. I took them back to the barn and showed the place off. Not too shabby if I do say so myself. Our three sheep, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, seemed to like it. Of course, I let them get to rest, get settled in, and I went back to the barn. When I got back to the inn, the missus had been asleep for hours, and so I began to quietly crawl into bed. But there was something I couldn't shake, a feeling inside of me. Of course, since she had been asleep for hours, there's no waking her if you desire a happy day. 
or just breakfast the next morning for that matter. In any case, I slipped quietly into bed and I just lay there and I thought. There was just something about Mary and Joseph. I couldn't shake it. It was like there was a peace about them. Mary was clearly close to giving birth and they had no idea where they were going to stay, but there was still peace. It, it, albeit, Mary was a little short with me at the beginning, but I'll attribute that to contractions in retrospect. But there was still peace. And I did something then that I had never done in a long time. and I began to fold my hands and I prayed. I asked God to give them peace and give them happiness and joy and warmth on this night. I asked God to bless them and their unborn child. And most of all, I asked God to just comfort them. Then I closed my eyes and I drifted off to sleep. I, well, I couldn't have been asleep for more than a few hours when I awoke to the enchanting sound of my wife's lovely voice shouting. She said, Turn off the light! I looked around quickly to see if I had left a candle burning. Of course I hadn't. Then I realized what she was talking about. I walked up to the window and, and I drew back the curtain and I saw the brightest light that I'd ever seen shining there in the sky, right above my barn. The second I saw it, I knew something important had happened. So I quickly raced out to the barn to see what had happened. And when I got to the barn, I found Mary and Joseph inside there with their newborn baby lying in a manger. I felt the overwhelming urge to kneel and pray, and so I did. I, and I couldn't understand it. Of course, I still don't really understand it to this day, but I knew, I felt that this was God's child. Of course, you know the rest of the story, Luke. It turns out it was indeed the Messiah. And he was born in my barn, in my barn of all places. <laughs> People poured in from everywhere to see the new Messiah. Uh, of course, yes, we had uh, shepherds. We had even the wise men come back. It turns out they stayed at a nice little B&B &B in Bethlehem while we were or in Jerusalem, excuse me, while we were waiting to get more rooms. We even had angels stop by. Of course, they didn't stay at the inn. It was something about wing space, but... You would not even believe the amount of people that poured in to see the newborn king. I guess you can't expect a king to stay in a barn forever. So, when Jesus, Joseph, and Mary finally decided to leave, it was pretty hard on us. We had grown pretty attached to the little tyke. I even saw the missus shed a tear. <laughs> Although I could see that she was relieved because, you know, that Jesus, he could sure go through those swaddling cloths. And since she was doing the laundry at the time, it... <laughs> It was a mess. Anyways, they left. And we thought business would die down, you know, go back to normal. But it didn't. The strangest thing happened. Hundreds, thousands of people pouring into the city to see the newborn king. It was astonishing. Some, of course, just wanted to look around, take a look at the inn and take a look at the barn. But others, others wanted to sleep in the barn to get the true holy family experience. It was ridiculous. So we started offering tours. In in the barn, twice a day, every room except for the China room, because that's where our great Aunt Bathsheba's silver is stored. I shouldn't have told you that. Just forget that ever happened. Business was booming. We were finally wealthy. The wife and I finally had enough money to hire a manager for the inn, and we began to tour the Holy Land. Everywhere we saw everything, and we began to do everything that we wanted to do with our money. We bought horses. We bought cows. We bought goats. We just had all the money we could ever want. I finally thought that I was living life to the fullest. I didn't think that I could be any happier until I saw him. We were in Jerusalem on some business one day and I heard his name proclaimed. <laughs> and I turned to see uh, Jesus riding in on a donkey. It, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I hadn't seen him since birth. And you can't even imagine what was going through my mind as I saw that little baby grown up worshipped as a king. I got on my knees and I began to praise him and, and I realized at that point that I had been a selfish man. You know, I always wondered why an angel never came to me. An angel went to Mary. 
Joseph. Even, even the shepherds got an angel. But no one ever came to me to tell me that I needed to prepare room to make provisions for the Savior of the world to be born in my backyard. Of course, his birth was a miracle and it brought me great fortune. But I had squandered it. At what price? I had spent my life doing things that were fruitless and that would never come back to me. You know, you don't have to write this down in your book you're writing, Luke, but all I have to say is that God has a plan. I believe there's a reason for everything. I believe there's a reason, and even though I might not understand it or know it, I believe that there is a reason that Mary and Joseph knocked on my door. I believe that there is a reason that I had no room. And I believe that there is a reason that the King of Kings was born in the most humble of places, a barn, and my barn at that. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Luke, and I hope you do well with your book. Who knows? Maybe someday it'll get published. Hey, while I've got you here, I'd like to run a song by you. I've uh, wrote it kind of based off the experiences that I've had. It, it's called Away in a Manger. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. <laughs> 